Welcome back, everybody. Today, uh, we're diving into a topic that uh, at first glance might seem kind of distant, but stick with me. It has the potential to hit uh, pretty close to home for everyone. Oh, absolutely. We're talking about Germany. Yeah. Specifically, we're going to look at the economic storm that's brewing over there. Right. And we're going to see how it could ripple outward across the globe. Yeah. Potentially impacting everything from our investments to the prices we see on the shelves at the store. It's all connected. Yeah. And get this, our sources are painting a pretty pretty intense picture. Yeah. We're seeing an energy crisis, a slowdown when it comes to exports, and a whole lot of political turmoil all kind of converging at the same time. Yeah. One article I was reading even called it a poly crisis. Oh, wow. Catchy, right? Yeah, it is. So to help us unpack this whole poly crisis situation, let's bring in our expert. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's break this down. What are we really looking at here? What are the key factors that are contributing to this economic storm brewing in Germany? Well, you know, to really understand this energy crisis that's gripping Germany, we have to kind of rewind a little bit and look at their reliance on Russian natural gas. Okay. Before the war in Ukraine, they were importing a significant portion of their energy from Russia. Right. Which worked fine until the war basically threw a massive wrench into that whole system. And so now Germany is kind of scrambling, trying to find alternative energy sources. And as you can imagine, that's really causing prices to shoot up. Makes sense. And so this energy crisis, I'm guessing it's hitting German industries where it hurts, mm -hmm. especially the industries that require a lot of energy to produce their goods. Yeah, absolutely. But how is this whole energy situation impacting Germany's ability to actually sell their products on the global market? Well, think of it like this, right? When you have higher energy costs, that translates into higher production costs. Yeah. And of course, what happens- Products get more expensive. Exactly. German products suddenly become way more expensive. Right. And they're not as competitive as they used to be. Makes sense. And then, to make matters even worse, one of their biggest customers, China, is going through its own economic slowdown. Oh, wow. Which means, of course, they're buying less from Germany. It's like a double whammy for German businesses. Their costs are up and the demand for what they're selling is down. Yeah. And I'm guessing all of this economic strain, it's just putting more pressure on their political situation. Yeah. Which, as we've already said, is pretty fragile to begin with. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Germany's current coalition government, it's actually made up of three parties with, you know, pretty different ideologies. Right. You've got the Social Democrats, okay. you've got the Greens, and you've got the Free Democrats. Gotcha. And they're really struggling to find common ground when it comes to things like climate policies, figuring out budget priorities, and, you know, frankly, how do you even approach this whole economic mess? Okay, I'm starting to see how all these pieces fit together now. Yeah. But I know some listeners might be thinking, you know, Germany's internal politics, that's their business. Right. Why should we care about what's happening over there across the Atlantic? Right. And that's a really fair point. Yeah. But here's the thing. You know, Germany, you know, remember, it's like the economic engine of the European Union. It's like the engine that's driving that whole train. And if that engine starts sputtering or, you know, even worse, breaks down. The whole crane slows down. Exactly. So what we're looking at is a situation where, like, problems in Germany could actually potentially trigger a slowdown or even worse, a recession in the entire European economy. Yeah. I mean, that's a very real possibility. And I have a feeling this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? You're right. It yeah. is. What we're seeing in Germany, it's a perfect example of just how interconnected our world really is, especially when it comes to economics. Right. And to really grasp the potential, the global fallout here, we need to bring another major player into this equation, the United States. Okay. Yeah. This is where things get really interesting, I think. Lurking in the background, we have the potential return of former President Trump. And we all know that could bring a lot of economic uncertainty. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a wild card that's on a lot of people's minds, particularly folks involved in international trade and finance. Right. You know, when it comes to financial markets, uncertainty is like poison. And a second Trump presidency, well, that could inject a whole lot of uncertainty into the global system. OK, let's try to unpack that a little bit. What's so worrying about Trump's potential economic policies? Well, you know, during his first term in office, Trump was very vocal about his love for protectionist policies. Right. Remember those tariffs he put on goods coming in from China and the EU? Oh, yeah. Those tariffs really messed with global trade and created a whole bunch of tension between the U.S. and its trading partners. And 
Honestly, some analysts are convinced that he might even double down on those policies if he makes it back into office. Wow. So we could be looking at a scenario where Germany, which is already dealing with its own issues, is suddenly hit with new trade barriers from a very inward-looking America. Yeah, that's a real possibility. And that's why it's crucial that we look at the bigger picture here. We have to understand not just what's happening internally in Germany, but how all of this could potentially intersect with the political and economic landscape in the U.S. Because honestly, if these two giants, if they stumble at the same time, yeah. it could send shockwaves through the entire global economy. That's a scary thought. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we've laid out this potential for some a uh, pretty major economic turbulence with Germany and the U.S. right at the center of the storm. Yeah. Now let's try to figure out where all of this could lead us. Okay. It's like we're standing at a crossroads with a bunch of different paths in front of us. I like that analogy. And to figure out which path to take, we need to really think about the different scenarios that could unfold both in Germany and in the U.S. Okay, so let's start with Germany. One scenario that could play out is that their current coalition government they somehow managed to pull it together and right. get through this crisis. Right. What would that look like? Well, that would definitely be the most stable outcome, but it's definitely not going to be easy. Yeah. You know, they really need to find some way to bridge their ideological differences mm -hmm. and come up with a clear plan moving forward. Right. It's going to take compromise, and everyone's going to have to put those partisan differences aside and think about what's best for the country as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. So if they can actually pull it off, what kind of policies might we see them implement? Right. What would a Germany pulls through scenario look like? Well, given just how serious this energy crisis is, they're going to have to really focus on diversifying their energy sources. Okay. And that means accelerating the transition to renewables like wind and solar power, but also, at least for now, maybe even exploring some other options. Like what? Like nuclear energy and imports from other countries, obviously not Russia. So it's not just about being environmentally friendly, but also about being energy secure. Exactly. Reducing dependence on suppliers that might yeah. not be so reliable. Makes sense. Yeah. But how about their economy and keeping it competitive? How can Germany make sure its businesses are going to thrive in this new kind of global landscape? That's a really good question and a tough one to answer. Yeah. You know, one thing they could do is offer some targeted support to the industries that are really having a tough time. Okay. Things like tax breaks or subsidies. Yeah. Maybe investing in research and development to help those German companies stay ahead of the game. Right. But whatever they choose to do, they have to be careful not to start a trade war, especially with the U.S. Right. It's a tough balancing act. They've got to support their own industries, but not make their trading partners mad. Exactly. So that's one scenario, right? Yeah. Germany figures it out and pulls through. Right. But what if they don't? What happens if their coalition government falls apart? under all this pressure. Well, that's definitely the less optimistic scenario and honestly could have some big consequences. Yeah. A government collapse would most likely trigger snap elections. Oh, wow. And that would just create even more uncertainty. And depending on who wins those elections, we could see a real shift in Germany's priorities, both economically and politically. Right. They might start focusing more on their own problems and less on being a leader in the EU. So instead of being the engine driving the EU train, they become just another passenger. Exactly. And that's unsettling, not just for the EU, but for the global economy as a whole. It really is. And that's why what happens in the U.S. is so important. If Germany's struggling, the last thing we need is the U.S. adding to the chaos. Okay, so let's bring the U.S. back into the picture. Yeah. We've talked about the possibility of Trump comeback and all the uncertainty that could come with that. Let's imagine a scenario where he wins the election and goes all in on those protectionist policies. Okay. What happens to the global economy then? Well, it could get pretty messy. Just think back to his first term. Yeah. Those tariffs he put on China and the EU, those did not help global trade. They caused a lot of problems. Right. And if he goes down that road again, we could see the same thing happen. But this time, Germany might be in an even weaker position to deal with it. So essentially, we're talking about the two biggest economies in the world. 
both facing their own internal struggles yeah. and then going head to head with each other, right? Right. Putting up trade barriers and potentially dragging everyone else into a trade war. Exactly. And that kind of fragmentation, it could have huge consequences. Global supply chains could be disrupted. Getting the things we need would become harder and more expensive. Right. Economic growth could slow down and there might not be as many opportunities for businesses to grow and create jobs. And all of this on top of the energy crisis, yeah. the political instability and rise in inflation. It's a lot. It really is. It is. It's a lot to think about. But that's why it's so important to understand these scenarios, the decisions that leaders make in the next few few months and years, mm -hmm. they're going to have a big impact on all of us. Okay. So we've explored how things could get really complicated. Yeah. But is there any hope? Are there any bright spots in all of this? Oh, there's always hope. We've spent uh, the last two parts of our deep dive kind of outlining some pretty intense scenarios. Yeah. But let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Okay. And talk about potential solutions. You know, we're standing at these crossroads. Are there any paths that could actually lead us to a more stable and maybe even a more prosperous future? Oh, absolutely there are. It's not all doom and gloom. Okay, good. But to get on those paths, we need a few things. We need smart policies, international cooperation, and honestly, maybe most importantly, we need to be ready to adapt as the world changes. Okay, so let's break all that down, starting with Germany. What can they actually do to get their economy back on track? Well, like we talked about earlier, energy diversification is key. They've made a start moving away from that Russian gas, but they really need to pick up the pace. Investing in renewables, that's a must. But they might have to think about other options, too, at least for the short term. Right. Nuclear power, for example. Okay. The important thing is to create a more sustainable system that's less vulnerable to, you know, global politics. So thinking long term, but dealing with the immediate crisis, too. Makes sense. What about that export slowdown, though? Right. How can Germany get back that competitive edge in this new global landscape? Well, I think one way is to focus on what they're already really good at. Okay. You know, high quality manufacturing, doubling down on research and development in sectors where they already have a strong base. Okay. What kind of sectors? Things like advanced robotics, green technologies, maybe even pharmaceuticals. You know, competing based on quality and technology rather than trying to be the cheapest. So basically, play to their strengths. Exactly. Focus on what they do best. Makes sense. Uh. But all of that takes time, right? Mm. What can they do to help those businesses that are hurting right now? Yeah, that's a good point. There are some things they can do. Tax breaks or subsidies could give some relief. They have to be careful not to mess up the market or start a trade war. Right, right. Investing in training programs to help workers adapt to the changes in the global economy, that's another good option. Okay, so that's the German side of things. Yeah. But zooming out, what about the global landscape? We've talked a lot about the risks of another Trump presidency, especially those protectionist policies. But could there be any positives, opportunities maybe that we're missing? Well, one good thing that could come out of it is that focus on American manufacturing. Okay. If it's done strategically, it could lead to new investments, new jobs. Right. The key is to make sure those policies encourage fair competition and not a trade war. So it's not about protectionism versus free trade. It's about finding the right balance. Exactly. And that brings up another really important point. International cooperation, even with everything going on, Countries have got to find ways to work together on the big challenges. Absolutely. No one country can solve these problems on their own. Climate change, pandemics, cybersecurity, those need everyone working together. Right. And finding that common ground, building those bridges, that's going to be crucial moving forward. Okay, so we've talked about policy and cooperation, but what about us? Yeah. What can we as individuals do in all of this? Because it's easy to feel kind of helpless. Oh, I know. But remember, the more you know, the better decisions you can make. Stay curious. Keep learning. Don't be afraid to ask questions. So stay informed. Stay engaged. Any other advice for our listeners out there? Be adaptable. The only thing that's for sure is things will change. Right. Be open to new ideas, new skills. Don't be scared to try something new. So stay informed. Be adaptable. And remember, we're all in this together. Yeah. Well said. And I think that's a good place to wrap up our deep dive. All right, folks. That's it for today. We've covered a lot, from Germany's problems to the potential for global instability. We did. But we also looked at some solutions. Right. And we emphasized how important it is to stay informed, be flexible, and stay connected. Very important. Before we go, I want to leave you with one final thought. The future isn't set in stone. The choices we make, individually and together, will shape the world we live in. 
So stay engaged, stay curious, and most importantly, stay hopeful. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.